And I said, you know, we're not going to make it to the, through the, the new year. We just don't have the money. And the next day I get this phone call, the church is burning down. So it was a total loss. We at First African first came together with Calvin. And then um, Good Shepherd Church burned down and we kind of had to, to, to pray with them and absorb the loss of their physical building. It was something like uh, uh, the, uh, the parable of the uh, rich young ruler. Uh, when good Christ asked him to give up everything and come and follow him. I didn't see a merger taking place. What I saw is three congregations willing to give up everything to follow a vision that they had. Once we got our check from the insurance, that was when our eyes were opened to the fact that we could not rebuild for us. That brought us into the conversation for the West Philadelphia Presbyterian Partnership. I was on the pastor search committee and we had been praying and we had been um, studying and everybody on the search committee got it that Pastor Eustacia was the one. My name is Eustacia Moffat Marshall and I serve as the pastor of New River. I grew up in a family of faith. Faith was always really important. Grew up in the church, playing piano in the church, seeing the church really active in the community. How I got to New River, I was serving on a board um, the Presbyterian Foundation Board, and I met a lady by the name of Ruth Santana Grace. She was the one who told me about this exciting project. It was about these three congregations discerning their future. These three churches have always had a history of reaching out, trying to serve the community, being a witness, and I think that common understanding of what our faith in Christ leads us to do, to be a blessing to others, is the common synergy that brings these congregations together. In coming in, she did individual interviews with each con congregant when she first came in to just get to know us. We had a retreat as a congregation to really begin to think about what it is that we feel God would have us to do, the, the area that we felt called to serve. Our first neighborhood walk, we really wanted to just observe what um, conditions um, the neighborhood was in. We noticed a lot of abandoned houses. We knew that there was a lot of food, food insecurity. And we came back and we talked about that. We pulled on the scripture in the Psalm that says, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. And so we wanted to be a place where people could feel like they belong, where people could uh, find a sense of hope and, uh, and wellness. We like to say we're three streams that have become a new river. A group of leaders met and we started really thinking about and dreaming about what might be possible in the historic First African facility. Why don't we invest in our facility that we have in our hands? Pastor Mark Tyler, I called him, I said, do you know any contractors or any, anyone that could help us? He gave me the name of Kia Steve Dickerson. Kia Steve Dickerson. Kia Steve Dickerson is the director of the Facility Refresh Project. Kia Steve Dickerson, born and raised in Philadelphia, is famously known for the reality TV show Trading Spaces. Over the past six months, Kia has directed and worked very closely with Pastor Marshall and New Rivers Facility team to help our congregation's vision come to life. The new fellowship hall space will be used for child care and community. The rooms in our facility will be used as co-working spaces and designed for multi-purposes. The welcome office will be used as an informational center for New River. Miss Jerry at our front desk is happy to serve you.
After turning three rooms into one, we created a temporary worship hall with control room, which doubles as a sound stage and venue for performing arts. The refreshing and the restoring of the facility is really about restoring a community. I have been tremendously blessed to hear people's stories. Like one gentleman was a veteran, served our country, was a former police officer. He was coming for assistance. And one of the things that touched me was he showed me his picture when he was like a child. And I looked at this, this older gentleman now showing me his picture of who he was as a child. And I saw my son. We're all connected. If one is suffering, we are all suffering. If one is not free, none of us are free. We're really deep, deeply connected. We, that conviction and the, the call of Christ who said, love your neighbor as yourself, which is not just as much as you love yourself, as yourself, as if that person is you. Christ, his life, his witness was about caring for people and just see, seeing ourselves in communion with people and that our love for people reflects our love for God. To be in this position and to see people and, and, and the struggles, but also to see the joys and to see the, the, the persistent hope and the tenacity that people have in, in, in the face of so much challenge um, deeply moves me. And uh, we hope that we can be a compassionate and caring presence. And at the end of the day, we want to see a world where we no longer have to pass out groceries. And so what do those policies and practices look like? What, what needs to happen? What needs to be transformed? So that there won't be anybody who has to come to the door for, for groceries because everybody will have what they need. That's the world we want to see. That's the vision. That's the ultimate vision. And that's what we're working towards. New River envisions its facility and ministry as an asset and hub of community wellness so that we can serve God's people. We believe the love of Jesus calls us to work towards the flourishing of all humanity and creation. On the land where Good Shepherd burned down will be a 50-unit senior affordable housing complex, much needed in the Philadelphia region.